Well, hello! It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And I had three comments over uh, on my last video, the Geha video, where I mentioned you know, my Panasonic, Lu Panasonic Lumix, which I've used for years as that camera, fell over. And so I'm sorry, I got to do me on the cell phone. And people said they preferred it. So I'm just curious uh, what it is you prefer. You know, is it the lighting? Uh, am I less blurry on the cell phone? Uh, do you like the wider angle? No, I'm just kind of curious. And by the way, this is here. It will be here because uh, I'm doing this old school tonight. I, I kind of got away from filming both parts of this at the same time, just to, kind of as a time-saving measure. But uh, tonight we're doing both. So, yeah, the light and the camera just have to stay in frame. Because I don't want you to see what's on the couch. Well, you can see kind of part of the mess there. Uh, I got a few things from school being sorted there. <laughs> um, but anyway, let's dive into the pens. So I'm going to make a confession before I uh, start talking about the pens. For years, this has been my ink journal. You know, since July 2017, I've been writing down every time what ink is in it. And all up until I kind of stopped November 13th because I wanted to save the final page for pen reviews or for a review of the notebook, which I will need to figure out what it is because I don't remember anymore, but hopefully I can find it again. So I needed a new ink notebook and an ink journal, and I just hadn't had one. But that was my busy time, and that's usually when I'm trying to use up inks anyway. Oops, let's tilt this down a little. You don't need to see my ceiling. Uh, so that's usually when I am look, um, trying to ink, write pens empty and, uh, you know, just consolidate and, you know, get so I have a whole new batch of pens for the new year. And uh, so I didn't have any new inks to add, so I was out of the habit and so a couple of the pens you're going to see tonight, I don't know what's in them. So I'm going to do my best to guess, but I don't know. Maybe you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. I do have a new ink journal. This is a cognitive surplus hypothesis, just like what I use for pens in use now. Um, I just thought the color concept very much went with you know, what this is, an ink journal. I should probably write there that it's an ink journal. So this is one of their newer versions, it's got kind of a textured cover. So I did ink up two pens tonight in response to a viewer question. So uh, I will do my best to answer that question tonight. But, as that, so that covers those two pens. This one I just reviewed, this one I remembered, and this one I remembered. I don't have a clue about the rest of them. So we'll find out. Or I will mislead you entirely and we won't know what the heck I'm using. So from left to right, I have my Platinum President. I was asked about my Platinum Izumo and almost got that out, but then I have another coarse nib here. I thought, eh, no. Uh, I have my uh, Pilot Custom Heritage 92, which I haven't had out in a while. And actually, uh, another reviewer may be borrowing it and this one when, it, when they run empty. Uh, this is my Lamy 2000. This is a uh, Parker Dual Fold. I know what's in this one. I have a P Pilot Custom 823. Geha 705, which I reviewed this week. Uh, this is a Platinum 3776 with a coarse nib. And a Pelican M800. Alright, so the first pen is this Platinum... Oops, let me... Not doesn't make a difference to you, but it makes a big difference to me. Gotta turn my view screen down so I can see what I'm looking at. This is a Platinum uh, President. It's a, you know, a very classy pen. Kind of has that Art Deco look to it. Uh, kind of a sleeper, I think, in the fine pen world. Because uh, people who try it like it. But a lot of people never even think to try it. 
I had mine ground to a cursive italic. It has a broad nib by uh, Dan Smith, the nib smith. Uh, I'm going to, I have a pretty good guess what's the ink in this one. So Platinum President. And this has a broad cursive italic nib. My guess, let me just look at my inks. Yeah, it is close to the front, so I'm feeling like my guess is pretty good. I keep feeling like I'm smelling blackberries, but I think that's my imagination, because this is not Deatrementis blackberry. So my guess is Platinum Cassis, or sorry, Classic Lavender Black. I don't know that, uh, but just judging by the color change it's doing and the color it actually has, that seems like a good guess to me. You know, other colors have a more in that series have a more dramatic color change, but I've always kind of liked this one because uh, it is more subtle. And if it's not that one, it, it definitely looks a lot like it. So good for whatever's in this pen, I guess. <laughs> My next pen is a a Pilot Custom Heritage ninety two. Uh, Pilot's Piston Pen. This has another iron gall link in it. Uh oh. Haven't written with it this particular one in about three days because I, uh, well, let's be honest. I haven't written with any of them except the Parker Dual Fold in about three days because I've been busy. But, uh, so this ink may have dried up a little in the nib, so we'll just wet it here on the where you can't see it, and it's shame. Platinum, custom. You know, fun thing. Um, I was getting to the point where I was thinking that this pen only worked with one ink. Oh, forgot the number, ninety-two. I was getting to the point I thought it only worked with one ink, because I always use Matahari's Cordial in it, which is a Noodler's ink that I really like. And so a couple of times I tried writing with something else in it, and ugh. So uh, I decided to put this in it. This is Rohrer and Klingner, Scabiosa. And uh, I don't know why, it just kind of seemed right to me. And I just wanted to see uh, what it would look like. And at first, it was doing that thing where, with hard starts and skips. And then all of a sudden, it just started flowing beautifully. Um, that last week of vacation, I filled this pen three times with this ink. And, uh, I mean, I was writing everything with it. I just was really enjoying this pen and ink combination until, you know, what happened just there. So, uh... Something for me to remember. I may have to find a different pen to be my uh, Matahari's Cordial. And I, I don't know, maybe the Matahari's Cordial is why it was clogging with other inks. Maybe it wasn't. Um, I do know there's some sediment in the bottle, which could have gotten into the feed or something. But uh, anyway, I just really enjoyed this, which is why even though I wasn't writing these down, this is one I knew right away what it was. Now, this one is a total mystery, maybe. We'll see. This is, oh, <laughs> Lamy 2000. Has a broad nib in it. And I see blue, and I've got a really good guess. We'll see what it looks like on the paper. Oh. That's not the color I expected. So, this is obviously blue. <laughs> As to which blue... Don't know. Uh, I I was 
Ooh, I had a thought. Just had a thought. Most of the mysteries are solved. I have a, a pen pal letter sitting over there that I was working on. And uh, I always, every page with most pen pals, I switch the pen and ink. I've got one pen pal because she switches all the time. So I'll switch like every half page or something. But anyway, I always write what the pen and ink are. And uh, so I've got them all written down. <laughs> I don't have the pilot president on there. But I have all the rest of them. So mystery solved. So this is not some blue ink. Should have known when I was so impressed by the brightness. This is burnt. Ooh, I just had another thought. Maybe. Okay. So you remember when I said I had been a little hoardy this week? Uh, I, what I mean by that is I've been sloppy about putting things away. And guess what's still out? The three bottles of ink that I filled. So yes, Roar and Klinger Scabiosa. Birmingham Pens Cathedral of Learning Panther Blue. I'll probably need three lines for that. And guess what the first one is? Not Classic Lavender Black. It's Monte Grappa Bordeaux. Uh, ink which sadly is no longer made. So I need to do a correction here. So we'll just uh, do it with the Parker Dual Fold because it's got a fine point nib and it'll fit. M O N T E Monte Grappa. I may misspell this. Monte Grappa Bordeaux. So, happy day! Hey! So, this is Birmingham Pens, which they uh, quit making inks for a while while they reformulated and started to make their own inks. Um, and I haven't seen an equivalent to this one up on their website yet. But I hope I do, because it's a very nice blue. Not that I really need more ink, or am planning to buy more inks, but uh, still, this is a good one. And I, I just, ever since I ran into a sample of this ink, and you know, I immediately bought a bottle, I just was quite taken by the name P Cathedral of Learning. Uh, just, you know, as somebody who's in academia, sort of. I mean, it's a public high school. But, uh, you know, as a teacher, somebody who values knowledge, I just think the whole concept of a Cathedral of Learning is very cool. Uh, the real story behind Cathedral of Learning is also very cool. So, very definitely a neat place that someday I'd like to see. So, we'll set these back in the hoard. <laughs> which this weekend I will take care of. I just got so lazy over Christmas. I don't know what was wrong with me. All right, so you, you, I cheated and showed you this already. Uh, this is a Parker Dual Fold Centennial. Um, you know, I uh, have related the story before about how when I was like 9 or 10, my family got this uh, pen catalog in the mail. And... I was so taken with the fountain pens, and I really liked the arrow clips on the Parkers. And the one I loved the most was the Parker Dual Fold, um, which was way out of my budget. Uh, so 35 years later or so, I finally got one. But uh, yeah, it is a very nice, well-made pen. Uh, I, I know people say that Parker isn't very exciting, but uh, I think they make attractive pens. Not exciting pens, but attractive quality pens. I can only go by the experience I've had, you know, 
anytime I praise a brand, I will have somebody comment and say, well, I had one once and it skipped like a, like the Dickens. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that was your experience. Uh, I've had pens that I have trouble with. In fact, uh, I have a certain big name pen right now that I filmed the first impression, the writing part, and uh, was going to uh, do the talky part another night and discovered that, you know, filling it, it was awesome to write with that first night. Been pretty miserable since that night, so uh, you may not ever see that pen. Because I don't like to do negative reviews. Because the thing is, you end up reviewing the pen you have rather than the model. Any reviewer you see is not reviewing the model, really. They're just reviewing the individual pen they have. So so when you know Matt Armstrong says, oh, these Visconti nibs skip, or Stephen Brown says, oh, I love my Visconti nibs, you know, they're rev it's kind of luck of the draw what they have. And I don't know that I reflected either of their positions, but, you know, I'm just saying that uh, you don't always get, a, you only get a representation of, well, okay, not only the nib, the ink that the reviewer used, the paper they use, sometimes even the envir environmental conditions where they are. You know, where I'm at is quite dry. Somebody in a more humid location might have very different results with a fountain pen. Okay, so enough preaching. Back to the story. So this is a Pilot Custom 823. Uh, it doesn't get a heritage like the 92 because it has rounded ends. As somebody pointed out to me at one time because I said it wrong on a video. So this is the Pilot Custom. And isn't that... Oh, oops, you didn't see any of it. Isn't that a nice looking ink? And this one I know right away by the color change. Uh, this is my broad because my fine nib is over here and really needs to get put somewhere safer. Because that whole debacle last fall with a, a bottle of sanitizer. Uh, back when I knew less about COVID-19. Uh, so this ink in it is Colorverse. Jupiter flyby. Which, uh, if Colorverse would come out with this ink by itself in a bottle, I might be tempted to buy it. Uh, as it is, it's part of a set of four, and out of the four, I like two of them, and the other two are just meh. Uh, but I love how it changes from red, kind of like the red spot of Jupiter, to, to this fade, to this brown with shading, that it's almost reminiscent of the stripes in Jupiter's atmosphere. So it's like they get the whole gamut of Jupiter. You know, did a better job than Aurora with their Giove, which does not look like Jupiter at all, but is so darn pretty. Uh, so earlier this week, I reviewed this, or did a first impression of this Geha 705. More first impressions to come. In fact, I was requested to talk about online because this came up in the Geha video. So I'm going to film my online video. It'll be out of order from what I've already got stocked up, but what the heck, that'll just get me a few more reviews and the hopper because uh, that's part of what I did over Christmas break is did some reviews. And I uh, have another pen I want to review pretty quick. This is a finish. I finally made the effort to figure out the model, a finish Parker 25. And we'll talk about why it's finished when I finally get the review filmed. So I've got a couple of interesting ones over here. Um, so, Geha 705, and it has an A. That's a uh, beginner's nib. And uh, they're, they're usually just a little bit thicker and uh, tougher. So I'm told that this sticker, I'll, I will put a... Uh, I took a better photograph of the sticker, but I'm told that, let's see if it'll focus on it. Oops. Okay, I am told that, anyway, um, the words on it, super saddle grip, 
an automatic ink cartridge system and then I think the bottom says one year guarantee. I had a lot of trouble making it out. I actually ended up using a loop and uh, about the time I was struggling with my loop and puzzling over those faded letters, uh, one of my German viewers translated it for me. And you know, that's the thing. We'll cap it so it doesn't dry out. If I saw an equivalent label in English, which is my native language, I could translate it. Um, German? Not so much. I mean, I took a semester of German in college, but it's not like I really know a whole lot of German. I was able to puzzle out, like, Tinta is the uh, ink and the... Oh, what was the other part of that? Tinta... Oh, oh, automatic. I was able to puzzle that out. The, uh... Sattelgrift. I just... Pff, I don't know. <laughs> so, um... And, and then I figured out at the bottom where it's super faded, there's a one yar one year, I thought, oh, how about a one-year guarantee or else a one-year warranty, whatever they do in Germany. So anyway, this has a rehydrated Geha ink because it's a cartridge converter pen and Geha cartridges are uh, uniquely shaped. So the ink in this is Geha Blue. And I don't know about you, but I really enjoy these uh, lesser known, less common brands of pen. Uh, and of course, if you're a German viewer, you're probably saying, well, no, Geha is an office products, and I remember them when, from when I was in school. And you have to remember where I am. I'm in North Dakota in the United States, where Geha never really made uh, much of an inroads, if any at all. So to me, it's, it's an exciting pen. All right, so my last... Two pens come from a viewer question. This viewer asked me uh, to compare the Platinum Course with a Pelican Broad. Now, uh, this viewer did not mention what type of pen they were talking about. You know, I, I knew the 3776 because they did say that, but they did not give a model number for the Pelican. So, I have a Pelican M800. Um... I don't know what the Pelican M1000 would be like. I have a medium, which is pretty broad, um, but I've never used a broad. So, you know, I can, again, I can only talk about the pens I have. So this first one is a Pelican, or sorry, Platinum 3776 with a coarse nib. Coarse is Platinum's word for double broad. And it has a big honking tip on it. So this is the Platinum 3776. Course. And the nib in it is, or I'm sorry, the ink in it is Diamine November Rain. Now I will tell you this paper that I'm using is, it's okay. Uh, it, it's nice for writing purposes. Like if I want to take notes, sketch out ideas, even do like a basic sketch, awesome paper for that. This is not a paper that if you were trying to show off an ink that you really want to use. So why did you use it with pens in use? Well, because the night I uh, opened up my brand new Bomo Art Journal and went to start writing... It was such a failure. And I looked around my house and said, well, what notebook do you have that you can use next week? And I looked around the house and, uh, I, I'm hoarding again. I have a hoard of cognitive surpluses. So guess what? We're going to go with cognitive surplus till I get to the end of this notebook. And then we'll see. Maybe I'll be talked into something nicer. But I like these a lot for writing. Not so much, maybe not the best for this, because, like, I, I can see a little sheen, maybe you can, around the sevens. That's about it. But it sheens beautifully on, a, like, Tomoe River paper. All right, my last pen. I, I wanted to put the same ink in it because then you could compare like to like. But 
I just couldn't stand the thought of two pens with the same ink in them, so uh, I did the same brand and the same series, hoping they'd have the same properties. So this is a Pelican M800. A lot of people prefer this one over like the M1000 because it's just a teensy bit smaller and just a little, little more user friendly. So the M800 nib just does not have the flex of uh, its larger brother, the M1000, but it's a nice, more of a carry-with-you-everywhere type of pen. Uh, if you carry pens that cost this much with you everywhere, which I do not. And I think you can see that the broad is narrower than the 3776 course. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do a couple of little hash marks side by side. So even though it's a question you did not ask, I'm going to lay out several broads. But I'll make sure I put, you know, your two broads together. So let me grab every broad I have here because if you didn't notice, a lot of the pens I inked up here are broad. So I'm going to start with the uh, uh, Platinum President, which I'm cheating a little. It's a broad cursive italic. So Platinum President, broad cursive italic with Monte Grappa Bordeaux ink in it. My next pen, we're going to do the broad from the Pilot Custom 92. And actually, fun fact, when this nib first appeared on my channel, it was attached to a Pilot Cu Custom Heritage, no, Pilot Custom 74. Um, but I swapped nibs. This, this came with a fine nib. So this is a Pilot Custom Heritage. 92 with a broad nib and I think you can see it's a definitely finer nib than the cursive italic but again that could be the whole italic thing uh, then we'll do the Lamy 2000 broader than the others but I think you can see it's got kind of an a kind of an italic thing going on Then we'll, oh, I should have done the two pilots side by side. Too late. The Pilot Custom Heritage 823, or sorry, Pilot Custom 823, which also has a broad nib. And you can see, again, it's fine like this one, much finer than these other two. Uh, the Platinum 3776. which has a coarse nib. And finally, the Pelican M800. So I would say that uh, it actually, and again, the way it's ground is going to change widths and stuff. But I would say it compares decently with the Platinum President. Uh, definitely a little broader than the other two Japanese pens that are broads. But narrower than the Japanese coarse nib. And definitely narrower than the Lamy 2000. Although the cross strokes actually look a lot alike. So make of that what you will. I hope that helped. So those are the pens and inks that I've been using this week. Uh, hopefully I answered some questions there about the broad nibs on several pens. I mean, it was just kind of serendipity that I happened to ink up so many broad nibs this week. And uh, I'm just looking. Only one vintage pen in the batch this week, which is also kind of a surprise. But 
I may have gotten vintaged out with all the first impressions that I filmed. Uh, I brought this up at the beginning. So it's a new year and apparently a new camera, or at least a repaired camera, because I am planning to send the uh, Panasonic in for repairs. But I'm just curious. I had uh, three comments in one video about how much better it looked on the cell phone. So I'm just curious uh, what you liked about it. So uh, let me know down in the comments. I am very curious. Uh, who knows? Maybe I'm, I will admit using the cell phone is a little bit less work. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, but you know, it, it could it could be even a setting thing. Like maybe I don't expose it the way people like. Uh, I, I know. I, I've been tending lately to expose it so the background's a little darker. You know, I, I don't get that kind of control with the cell phone. But, you know, the main reason I made it darker is it makes those lights pop a little bit more. Which is a silly reason to do it that way, but that's why. Um, but then I have to be careful about my face and how I position these lights to shine on my face. So, uh, yeah. Now, I, I remember the days when I just did this all with natural light, but and holding an iPad in my hand was some of the first few reviews. So I've come a ways since then. Oops. Camcorder says, hey, my battery's running out. Or actually, it's saying, hey, you're not using me. Turn me off. Save the battery. Uh, so anyway, I'm just curious because then I can decide, you know, is it the setting or is it the camera? I like the camera. I mean, if I go hiking somewhere... Almost always, that's the camera I take with me because it's so light and small compared to the, you know, the nice camera I have, which also used to be what I did the YouTube channel with, but now that mostly is used for sports photography and uh, stuff like that where I can, where I'm not going very far. Uh, another interesting thing that happened this week, I, uh, no, it was last week because it arrived, when, did, I don't know when it arrived. I guess it arrived this week. Anyway, I bought a pen from my Uber... Sorry, they're now called protopens.com. And uh, I uh, I think they must occasionally at least look at my channel. Because uh, they had a surprise in it. If you've been following the community tab on this channel, I mentioned it. I had a bottle of Parker Quink. Can you see? Oops. It's over here. Bottle of Parker Quink washable blue. And uh, the reason I think they've been watching the, watching the channel is, well, for one thing, I've been doing all my first impressions with this bottle of Parker Quink Washable Blue. They may have seen the level. But I'm also wondering if they've seen the recent controversy over whether this is Parker Quink Washable Blue or not. Now, the box, you know, after a while ended up being just too ratty to keep the bottle in anymore, so I threw it away. Uh, but it did say Parker Quink Washable Blue. People have been suggesting that maybe what I have is Parker, what's it called? Parker Quink Permanent Blue, which is not actually sold in the United States. But then again, I can't remember where I bought the bottle from, so who knows? But, uh, so I'm wondering if they were trying to wade, that, wade into the controversy to give me a bottle of Parker Quink Washable Blue to compare with. So I will tell you this much. There's a video coming, but it's waiting. Because I also have some Parker Quink Permanent Blue on the way. Not from them, I bought it from somebody else. So I can do comparison. And I already know what's in this bottle. I figured it out, thanks to this bottle that they sent me. But I'm not going to tell you until uh, that bottle of Permanent Ink arrives and then we can just do a side-by-side -side comparison of all three. I just hope I can find enough Parker pens with the same size nib to compare them. But anyway, we'll do some experiments and things too along the way just to make it fun. So when that arrives, I'll film that video. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. Even though I know the answer now, but you don't. So you're just going to have to wait in suspense. <laughs> I got to drive up my views somehow. That was one of the questions why I care about views. and Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's... I remember when I started this channel and, uh, you know, I'd get one comment on a video. I'd be like, oh my God, somebody actually watched it. And, uh, you know, now I, I don't know if I've had a video lately where nobody's commented. It's been a long time. 
So uh, sometimes it's hard to keep up with the comments. I, I don't know where that point comes where you say, oh, I don't think I can keep up with this. I'm just going to have to answer only some of them. I, yeah. So I'm not there yet, but <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm babbling. Oh, is it late at night, Mr. Squirrel? Yes, it is. It's, uh, oh, part of my hoard's in front of my clock. It's, uh, oh, shoot, it's almost 9 o'clock. <laughs> I had it in my head that I started filming this at 7, but I know I haven't been talking that long. So I must have started after 7. Probably I started prepping at 7. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, and, and some of the other fun things this week, uh, we saw a wild adventure in Washington, D.C. I said what I wanted to say about that. I'm not a political commentator. so uh, But I'm glad to see that wiser heads have prevailed. And I always think it's interesting when you post something like that, how some people get stirred up. But on the other hand, stirred up on my channel is quite different from stirred up on other channels, uh, you know, especially politically oriented channels. So stirred up he, on my channel seems to be, uh, Mr. Squirrel, I must slightly disagree with you on this point. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I appreciate that. I have a good audience. And then my uh, last thing, I think I mentioned, uh, the house did get a little hoarded over Christmas break. Not so much because, well, okay, there's two new things on the floor there the, where their box is still there. And the thing is still there because I haven't quite figured out where I'm going to put it. But uh, mainly because I got lazy about putting things away. <laughs> I mean, why? I, I don't get this bad in the summer, but somehow over Christmas I just like fell apart. So I've got to spend an hour or two doing some decluttering this weekend. Because, uh, yeah, let it get ahead of me. I don't know, do you do that? So anyway, like I said at the beginning, my big question was about the lighting. I, people said they prefer this. I'm just curious, what do you prefer? And if you do prefer this or you prefer the other, I'd be interested to know why. Because maybe there's a happy place where everybody can join hands and figure it all out. So anyway, I want to thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.